Okay, so this is my OOTD. I'm really excited to wear this actually. I ordered this a while ago from a Parisian brand that I'm going to butcher called Cidular. Cidular, I guess. Um, honestly, they create these really good Peter Doe knockoffs if you've uh, ever seen his work. And I just think they're super cool. So here's the skirt. It's kind of like a half suit, half um, pleated situation. And it's got a matching top, which I'll grab. So this is gonna be very military. So sage is like everywhere this winter, which I'm into. The nice thing about this though is that it's actually really lightweight to the point where I was worried I kind of ran out of time this season to wear it. <laughs> but thankfully, it's still 75 degrees in New York, so I can wear it plenty. So yeah, I'm gonna tie this nicely. There, kind of makes for a cool, you can see the details. Yeah, so very military. And so, of course, little pop in the back, little leg. So I'm gonna pair it with these Zara boots that are a knockoff of the Bottega boots. You can see really beautiful detailing. I actually, I kind of find it hard because I have gigantic feet to kind of pull off a big chunky uh, boot like this, but I think these look really good. Yeah, I feel like very Tomb Raider in this outfit. <laughs> so yeah, I feel, feel pretty cool. So this is what, and honestly, it's insanely comfortable, which is kind of sadly the thing that makes me feel uh, the sexiest most of the time. So if I'm really comfortable, pretty happy, but I'm loving, I feel like I'm gonna take every picture like this uh, in this outfit. But yeah, really good. Gonna wear this today. Oh, yeah, it just feels so nice. So yeah, I was really happy. Uh, first time purchaser of this brand and super into it. It does come from Paris, so plan ahead. It takes like two weeks for it to arrive, but it's it's worth it. It's stunning. Some of their pieces aren't as high quality as others. Um, I also got this cool blazer from them that has Van Gogh on it, which is really cool. I mean, it's obviously not the most high quality fabric, but if you want like a cool sort of standout piece, I think it's definitely, definitely worth a try. Yeah, I'm very pleased. I keep down first. I see evil, I evil, and I converse. Not today, say. This how God works. Take my position with his giving with no cause. All right, so the first mega gallery I will be hitting up is David's Werner, and I'm so excited to see this mysterious Doug Wheeler that is only around for two weeks, one week to the private and essentially one week to the public. Wow. So this piece, the reason it's so special, it's called Untitled 1967 is because it's on view for the first time since the artist first solo exhibit at the Pasadena Art Museum in 1968. So obviously it's been a long time and that makes it special. But the other thing that makes this really special is this installation is a rare example of the artist fabricated light paintings made between 1966 and 1967. And what's particularly special about this period is that it was Wheeler's departure from traditional painting and it was his first experiments with light as a medium which clearly boded really well for him in his career because he continued to do it for essentially the rest of of his lifetime and uh he's still alive and uh turning out really amazing works so yeah this was was one of the first and was certainly not one of the last so yeah this was a very very special and cool thing to get a sneak peek of Oh my god guys i'm so excited i'm now on my way to hauser and worth's brand new compound in chelsea and yes it is a compound similar to pace similar to zwerner hauser 
built a giant building, five stories, if not more, um, of gallery space and office space. And oh my God, what an exhibit to kick it off with. I cannot wait to see the inside of this. 20,000 square feet. This exhibit is titled Artists for New York, and it's very appropriately titled because it is an initiative that was set up to raise money, essentially, for these New York City visual art nonprofit organizations that have been severely impacted by COVID-19. And what better gallery to host this than Hauser & Wirth, which arguably is one of the top, if not the top, blue chip gallery of our time. I mean, they represent artists as new and powerful as Avery Singer, all the way up to George Kondo now. And allegedly, (laughs) Forbes said uh, they have about $225 million in sales annually. So if anyone's going to put together you know, a a fundraiser or initiative to raise money for nonprofits, I certainly would want Hauser doing so. And they've really knocked it out of the park with this one. It goes to benefit 14 organizations in New York City. You're going to recognize a lot of these names. We're talking about Dia Art Foundation, the Drawing Center, Highline Art, MoMA PS1, Public Art Fund, which I, oh, I'm i so, so sorry. I always get confused with the Art Production Fund, not the same thing like I mentioned earlier, and White Columns. And all of these artists have donated their artworks. And so this is going to raise a ton of money. We're not talking about, I mean, we are talking about a really impressive span of artists from the very emerging until the very established. And yeah, these are going to fetch some really incredible prices and raise a ton of money. And and frankly, for those that aren't that familiar with the art world, if you don't know anything about art and you walked into this exhibit, you're going to see an artist, every single artist, I would say, actually, that's represented in this exhibit is a significant artist within the future of art history. I mean, Dana Schultz, um, Archimedora Niles, uh, George Kondo, it's the the span and the range Avery Singer like I mentioned earlier there's so many incredibly talented artists represented in this show Forrest Kirk and uh yeah it's it's almost overwhelming like you're kind of seeing history being written before your eyes as you're walking through this this exhibit which spans over three different floors throughout the gallery and frankly it was a really cool time to check out their new space which is did not disappoint in any way shape or form Oh my god, and here you have the mother of everyone, Mary Weatherford. I think this is an older work of hers, 
and last she's evolved back with her new style because she didn't use as much neon in her older works and they were a little bit darker but it is really large which i feel like her older ones weren't as huge so this is an arkhamanoro niles effing love he just got signed to lehman maupin rightfully so he's one of the most talented artists in my opinion of the future generation this george kondo older but impressive still gonna fetch i can't even imagine how many millions there's a joanne green bomb oh, dana schultz on the left of that sam falls on the right his exhibition is happening right now at 303 gallery that's a new one as well because he just started incorporating skulls and more human imagery within his leaves and other forest elements <laughs> that he usually has in his works this is the dana schultz on the left and she just signed to David Swerner, which is really exciting for her. I loved her show at Petzl a few years ago. That was honestly one of my absolute favorites. Yes. Here we have a Matt Connors to the left of what is on the right which is rashid johnson and ugh, amazing both of them i love matt connor's his works are incredible oh, there's the glenn ligon the neon sign and forrest kirk i absolutely love this a little more abstract than his normal paintings but this one is just i feel like he's really coming into his own like, he's just getting better and better. And then an Avery Singer, that large one. Yeah, I think this floor was absolutely the most impressive. And But, I mean, every floor is just knocking it out of the park. It's, it's kind of unreal. Oh, my God. Oh, you guys. It's supposed to be freaking fall, and it's... So warm outside, but honestly, oh, there's nothing better than taking your mask off. It used to be taking your bra off, now it's taking your mask off. Oh my god, and drinking water. Oh, let me show you what I got. So everyone was so sweet, David Zorner. I got this cute tote bag. I'm such a sucker for a tote bag, it's not even funny. But it's what's inside the tote bag that's what's special. This gorgeous Doug Wheeler catalog that I cannot wait to go through. Oh yes, they talk about all the technical, mm. yes. All the technical specs and stuff behind it. Oh. I love a catalog. Yes, so if you're not familiar with what a catalog is or what it does, it's essentially all of the context that you would ever possibly need behind an artist and their work. Um, sometimes if it's a major exhibition, they'll do a catalog around uh, that exhibit or sometimes it'll just be about the artist and their body of work over time. So I keep smacking this, so I'm very, um, very, very happy to have it in my life now. Uh, let me know if you want me to do a video about all the different artist catalogs and kind of how they're laid out. I have a lot of amazing ones. Um, I think some of my favorites are the Basquiat one from his museum show at the Louis Vuitton Foundation in Paris. That was just, A, that was the most incredible exhibit, but the catalog just like kind of helps the exhibition live on because after it's closed, everything's still documented in the catalog. Another one, or more recent one, is the Hank Willis Thomas exhibit that was at Crystal Bridges, and I got the catalog for that, and it's just phenomenal. So, yeah, they're they're wonderful. Mary Weatherford's from her Gagosian show a couple years ago. I just, it's still one of the most beautiful books, so. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video where I, I walk you guys through my favorite uh, art catalogs, but thank you, David Swerner, for letting me go behind the scenes, and yeah, get some pics and uh, yeah, with this beautiful, beautiful book. So fortunately I've, uh, my lunch break is over now and I've got to get back to work. But, uh, but yeah, it was a good, good time for sure. See you next time.